Unit 1, Lesson 3, Vitus Bering, Across Siberia to North America. In 1733, the most complete scientific expedition in history up to that time left St. Petersburg, Russia. The goal of the expedition was to explore the east coast of Siberia and to find out if Asia and North America were joined. The scientists planned to report on everything, the geography, climate, plants, animals, and customs and languages of the Siberian people. The expedition had to cross Siberia in order to reach the Pacific Ocean. Vitus Bering, the leader of the whole expedition, left St. Petersburg with almost 600 people. The group included a few scientists, skilled workers of all kinds, soldiers, and sailors. Alexei Chirikov left later with most of the scientists and tons of supplies. It took seven years for Bering's and Chirikov's groups to cross Siberia. They traveled mostly in flat-bottomed boats on the rivers. Bering's group spent a year in Tobolsk, where they built a ship and explored the Ob River. They continued to Yakutsk, where they spent four years. Yakutsk was only a small village, and there were many people in the expedition, so they had to build their own buildings. They also built boats and explored the Lena River. Then they moved on to Okhotsk on the eastern coast. It took two more years to build ships so that they could explore and map the east coast. Bering made careful plans, but there were always problems. For example, they lost a lot of their food when one of the ships sank in a storm. But finally, their two ships started for North America. They had only one summer instead of two years for their explorations because of the many problems and delays. And summers are short in the north. There was more bad luck. There were storms, and two ships lost contact. But at last, the sailors on Bering's ship saw mountains a short distance across the sea. This proved that North America and Asia were two separate continents. Their problems continued. Their water supply was low, but when the men went ashore in Alaska, they got water that was a little salty. Many of the men were sick from scurvy, a disease caused by the lack of vitamin C. When they drank the salty water, they became even sicker. Then they started dying, one after another. As the ships sailed south, back toward Okotsk, it became lost in storms. Finally, a storm drove it onto a small island, and the men knew their ship could not sail again. They were in a place with no trees, but there were birds and animals for food and fresh water to drink. However, it was too late for many of them. Men continued to die from scurvy, and on December 8, 1741, Bering died and was buried on the island that is now named for him. When spring came, the few remaining men were able to build a small ship from the wood in the old one and leave the island. By this time, the Russian government had lost interest in the North Pacific. Bering's reports were sent back to St. Petersburg and forgotten. Decades later, people realized that Bering was a great explorer. His expedition gathered important scientific information about the interior of Siberia, made maps of the eastern coast, and discovered a new part of North America. Today, we have the Bering Sea between Siberia and Alaska to remind us of the leader of this great scientific expedition.